with host and founder of New Life Ministries, Stephen Arterburn. New Life Live is dedicated to transforming lives one at a time, thanks to the giving hearts of you, our listeners. Our goal is to provide you with wisdom from God's Word to give you hope and help in life's hardest places. If you have a question you'd like to ask today, our phone lines are open. Call 1-800-229-3000. That number again is 1-800-229-3000. Now here's Steve. Hi, everybody. Welcome to New Life Live. Really glad you're with us here today. It is a great day for New Life. Friday, a lot of guys are uh, getting some help at every man's battle. And, uh, you know, if you are interested, maybe you're starting that journey, understanding a life of sexual integrity, we can get a copy of the new book, the 20th anniversary book, uh, in your hands for a gift of any amount. Now, here's a gift. Alice Benton is with us here today. Alice, how are you doing? Well, Steve, I get so excited about every man's battle because of what it does for the children of these men. Because yes, when that's true. it goes on, when sexual addiction or pornography use goes untreated, the children are so likely to repeat the pattern either as perpetrators or they get into relationships and marriages where they're victims of their spouse doing what the offending parent had done. So the men that are willing to go to this weekend in a spiritual way as well, it breaks that cycle and it frees the next generation from the likelihood of repeating the pattern oh what a beautiful no, it, beautiful thing to do for your children it, it really does and you know one of the worst things um i think is that the separation that occurs uh just the disconnection that occurs when pornography is there and of course you know my wife facilitates a, a group for women with sexual integrity problems too and it's not just a male problem but we see so many men, really, that could be such great dads, great husbands, but they literally can't stop this. And so they justify it, try to minimize it, and it impacts everything. But just as it impacts everything when you have the problem, it impacts everything when you decide to get over it and recover from it. So... Um, Every man's battle. We got one coming up next month. Just because we have one today doesn't mean we don't have one next month. We do. You sign up, get involved. It really could change everything. One eight hundred New Life. Well, let's uh, let's go to Lisa from Sterling, Virginia. WAVA is the station. Hi, Lisa. How are you? Fine. Thank you very much for taking my call. I am a partner with your ministry for some time. I learned thank you. a lot about your ministry, and thank you so much. I learned quite a bit. Thank now, you. What's going on? My, my, uh, my question is, I'm the grandmother of a paternal, uh, I'm the, uh, you know, my son's uh, son, there's four siblings. He's the eldest, and he has got diagnosis of bipolar, and uh, he was an ex, you know, drug addict, and he was in a rehab. He's doing, he's doing fine now. Okay. Uh, he lives in a different uh, state, and he was working full time, and uh, help. You know, the parents were helping him to some extent. Now he has come to a conclusion that he wants to be a psychologist, and his parents were out of the country for vacation. And during that time, he called me whether he can, I can help him to get this uh, credits for his college. All his three siblings are. Uh, college graduates and he feels terrible inadequate and his uh, self-esteem is very low right and i think there is some dysfunctional family because his father is a very very successful man in the medical field and okay. he, this boy is the first child i don't think they did a good parenting and there was some favoritism the other three children are doing fine so well, okay, I'm hold on, and we'll of... hold on, and we'll uh, right after this break, we'll find out what is the big dilemma. Dave Stoop will be joining us. Really glad that you called us. Glad you're listening. If you need help? One eight hundred New Life. That's the eight hundred number. Where people are there, they got up this morning wanting you, waiting for you to call. They want to change lives. It begins with one eight hundred New Life. We'll be back. I feel blessed to have had this opportunity for my needs to be met, connecting with other women who are fighting the same fight 
hoping for healthy marriages and growing closer to the Lord on their journey. My name is Shelly Martinkus, and I want to personally invite you to the Restore Workshop. If you have been affected by betrayal, it might be that your husband has been looking at pornography. It might be an emotional, a physical affair. I would love for you to come join us. I feel encouraged and hopeful that even in my struggle, I am enough. You will leave with hope, with a community of sisters ready to support you, and you will also leave with tools to move you forward on this journey. Through the sharing in our small group, I realize that I am not alone. Please don't hesitate. Pick up the phone, call 1-800-NEW-LIFE. I would love to see you there. The Restore Workshop is coming to Southern California February 28th to March the 1st. Call 1-800-NEW-LIFE to find out more. That's 1-800-639-5433 or online at newlife.com. To find out more information about New Life or to order any of the resources mentioned on today's program, call 1-800-NEW-LIFE. Now back to New Life Live. We are back. Glad you're with us here today. And so we're talking about, um, sounds like Lisa's uh, grandson's getting his act together. What is the problem, uh, Lisa, with him wanting to get his degree and all? Okay. He, so he wanted to take some credit so he cannot work full time and go to school. So I said, I, financial help. I said, I will help him out for the next four months. But... He doesn't want to tell his parents, and I, at that time I agreed that, I okay, it's okay, I don't want to say it, you tell him if they want to so. say So what happened is now I'm a believer and they are not non-believers. So my question is, I'm having a lot of problem with my conscience because I have a very good relationship with my son, you know. Mm-hmm. So now I'm hiding something from my, my yeah. son for the sake of my grandson. And right. so I'm, be- I'm torn between my grandson and my son. Yes, I hear you. I hear you. Okay. <laughs> uh, I'll tell so you my I thought. What book I yeah. uh-huh. <laughs> Go ahead. What's the question? So I was just thinking how to rectify this um, because uh, the father and the son, they don't get along well. They don't see eye to eye. And he, he, there was some favoritism in the, you know, the four siblings, and he was the eldest one. He always felt that he was neglected. Okay. So here I am, the grandmother, who yeah. wants to help him with all, the, with all yeah. my heart. But sure. the parents don't want to do it because he went to school twice and he dropped out. So they think that he cannot be a psychologist. You just okay. don't work, and I feel that he has to try. Okay, so when you say um, his father and how he feels, and then you say the parents. So um, this boy's mother, your daughter-in-law, is in. he agrees with the, the dad there about all of this? They're on the same page with him? Yeah, the, 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 the father, the, both the parents are very, you know, very good marriage for the past 30 years now. now okay. The problem is he's very close to his mother, but he's completely yeah. distant from his father. Yeah. Okay. Well, <laughs> my, my two cents on something like this is that you have to tell the grandson that y- you really are in a difficult place. You want mm. to support him, but it can't be a secret anymore. And and so mm. you tell him, I'm going to have to uh, share this with your dad. Mm. And so then yeah. you go to the dad and you say, when you guys were, were gone, here's what happened. Here's the decision that I made. And it's going pretty well. And I'm just going to ask you to try to understand the heart of a grandmother. And I, and forgive me for, you know, not telling you sooner, but I, I love you and I care about you. And I want to try to make this right in whatever way that I can. And, and you have to kind of uh, be willing. I don't know what will happen then, but... Uh, hopefully, yeah. if you have a humble heart uh, and you you're open about it, hopefully they'll see how you were acting 
in the best interest of somebody, and it was it was a tough place, and you did the best you could. Alice, what are your thoughts here when you hear the bind that she's in? What do you think she should do? Well, I agree with your approach because, Lisa, to clear your conscience, I think Steve is right. It doesn't help you to keep this secret, but it does sound like there's a risk in telling. What are you and your grandson most afraid will happen if the parents find out you're assisting him? They, I think, you know, uh, he feels that the father may say, uh, may not like this idea because he was dropped out twice. And they said, we don't want to spend any more money for your college education. So if you want to do it, you do it by himself. But he can't do it by himself by doing the full-time job. And he's 29 years old. And and, uh, Lisa, is he, do you think so, he's afraid that the parents will try to make you stop helping him? He cannot stop me because my son will not do that. <laughs> mm, okay. okay. The, then, then, Lisa, the only additions I would give to what Steve advised would be to apologize to your grandson that you've changed your mind because he thought you would yeah. keep this a secret. You did too. So, yeah. so apologize. And you might also offer either you tell or, or I will tell, but I just can't keep this a secret. But if you want to be the first to tell your parents, you could. And if you don't, oh, then yeah. I, I need to to clear my conscience. But I will keep helping you. Uh -huh. Give him that reassurance. I will keep helping you. Yeah. Yeah. And when and when you tell the grandson, the when you tell the grandson that you have to do this, it's a it's really a very pure motive that your conscience won't let you keep it a secret anymore. Yeah. That is an honorable motive and and so you're just asking him to understand he may not, but I think the next right thing is to clear that conscience right up there. Okay? Uh, you think I should, uh, I, 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 you know, I can take my son to your dinner or something and slowly tell him, but I, I think that'd be a great from idea. Well, I wouldn't get permission get from grandson. the grandson. I would just tell the yeah. grandson, okay. you, you feel yeah. you have to do this now, even though you said you wouldn't because your conscience is really yeah. bothering you and you're hoping for a yeah. really good outcome yeah. that everybody uh, can see good things ahead. Uh, for him getting the education. And I'm glad you called yeah. us. And uh, I'm going to send you a little copy of this book, Take Your Life Back, and I think it'll be a great one. All right. Uh, really glad uh, and hoping, um, hoping and praying uh, that something good will come out of that. All right. Let's go to, uh, how about we talk with uh, Ron from Minneapolis, Minnesota. Ron, how are you doing? Uh, me just turned out. Uh, can you hear me okay now? Yes, we can. Okay, I just wanted to make sure that I didn't have because I didn't have any background noise going on. I, I'm driving, so um, okay. Anyway, I just had a question for you guys. I, I, I got a text in with the show, I've been listening to your show for quite a while, and uh, I had a question regarding my relationship with my wife. She's what I would say a practicing alcoholic, and I'm in recovery and have been for about seven years or so my question for you guys is what would be not necessarily what would be the next step but what would your opinion be in my uh pursuit we, it's a second marriage for both of us and we have a bunch of baggage and by the grace of god she is willing to attend counseling however she has suggested we get a divorce and she has retained an attorney this was back last summer, but really hasn't followed through with it. I've said, I've said, if you want to file for divorce, that's up to you, but I'm not going to respond to your attorney unless they serve me papers. We have a five-year-old child. We're both older parents. We, atten we attended the, uh, the Intimacy and Marriage Conference in Dallas here before, I mean, a year ago, and... Um, it seemed like it was going well for a little bit, but when she's asked to sort of confront any of her own stuff, she's not really willing to look at it. And I stepped well, up a little bit, a little over a year ago. Just bear with me for one second. I stepped up a little okay. over a year ago on Henry Cloud's advice, suggesting that if she's not participating in the marriage, that I'm not going to participate in maybe, in other words, I'm like the enabler or caretaker, and and she's in denial about the situation. So, as I said, we're in counseling. I just am wondering how to pursue that. 
and we have this five year old. We still live in the same house. I basically make all the payments, and yeah. uh, so it's just challenging. Okay, so the question I have is: Did you say she is a practicing alcoholic? Well, in other words, I'm not. When I say that, I'm not a, I'm not a, uh, you know, psychotherapist or psychologist, but. I have a lot of experience and done a lot of work in not only personal growth, but recovery myself. And so her day-to-day routine is always having booze in the house, always having it met with rage. If there's, you know, if there's any sort of uh, confrontation on it, spin cycle, you know, the, the, the whole bit. I, I've, I've read yeah. your, your series on the narcissistic stuff. And, um, you know, well, she's sounds like the issues herself. Yeah. Okay. So, are you guys died last year? So she's grieving that. Okay. Are you, you know, guys going, going to counseling together? Are you going to counseling together? We are still. We are going to counseling, and so I've got to learn to be a better listener. And to what happens is, you know, based on my train wreck past, I have a tendency to respond in a defensive manner, as trying to get her to look at her own stuff as a and that's yeah. what happened at the marriage intensive. Yeah, you know, well, we're in the group I, there's setting, all sorts and, of there's all well, sorts of problems here. Let me uh, let Dave right. and Alice wade into it. Uh, who, who wants to go okay. first? Well, I I think every every recovering alcoholic can benefit from going to Al-Anon because every recovering sure. alcoholic is codependent, and you're trying to sure. change her, and you know better than that because of what you learned in right. your own program. Right, and so somehow you've got to bow out of that and begin to look at ways to rebuild the relationship, things that you learned at the intimacy workshop and things that your counselor is trying to get you to do. And sure. really go all out for it. Don't don't just do it half-heartedly and don't worry about her changing it. Maybe her, right. her drinking may be a reaction to to the life situation and the only way she can handle mm-hmm. what's going on. Sure. And, and before Alice, Ron, I, I think another area of recovery for you is to try to recover your heart a little bit. In other words, mm-hmm. when a woman says, you know, I I'm, want a divorce, and the response mm-hmm. is, well, I'm not going to do it until you file, versus, honey, I, I would hate to for us to be divorced and miss the life that we could develop together if we were both, you know, committed as we have been and willing to work and I'm willing to work. And, you know, they're just, there's a sure. more heartful response here. No, but I, I, sure. I really feel like you're, you're wanting to control her, push her. And you, you probably know this, but the more you push a person to change, the more they dig in their right. heels and try to protect sure. their their territory. Alice, what are you thinking here to help? Well, Ron, I'm pretty concerned about your five-year-old. If your wife has alcohol in the home all the time, depending on how much she's drinking mm-hmm. it, but she's also raging, I'm, I'm worried what's happening mm-hmm. to the five-year-old and what he's being exposed to. Mm-hmm. So I, I really right. encourage you to talk to your therapist to determine if he's mm-hmm. safe with what she's doing, because you may need to determine if she won't go into further recovery for the alcoholism, you might have to take steps mm-hmm. to protect your son from her rage and maybe neglect yeah. or, or alcohol use. But you, you did something very humble here. You pointed out that you could be a better listener. And, and I think I think you're right. I think you have a lot, you lo- use a lot of words. And you may talk mm-hmm. about your recovery a lot in a way that comes across to your wife that you're so much better than mm-hmm. she is or so much farther along. I don't think that's your intention, right. but I think that's how she might take it. So I think it would benefit right. you if you would go home today and say, I know this about myself. I realized it again today. I'm pretty talkative. I don't listen well enough to you. And maybe I'm lording my recovery over you. How, how does that affect you? Mm-hmm. Would you tell me how that makes you feel when I do those two things? And just listen to her. Right. It might lower her defenses a mm-hmm. little bit, Ron. Might. It's, right. it's, uh, minimizing it, it probably would lower her defenses. Might see a miracle begin to happen. Mm. Yeah, I, I think one of the tough things right. is, is when, when somebody's a big target and they're 70% of the problem, it's hard for us 
uh, to go take care of our 30 percent. But that's what we're encouraging here. And uh, I hope something we've said here is good. And, um, you know, let me send you uh, this. I've got a, a seven uh, minute marriage devotional Bible. I'm going to send it to you. And I hope you guys could get in there together. I think being open and honest in counseling, make that little boy a priority here. Uh, we don't want him to be in, in danger. You're listening to New Life Live. And if you need some help, never easy to humble yourself. But the Bible says if we can humble ourselves, it is the Lord that will lift us up. What a great thing when we are lifted up by God to a new place we never, ever dreamed we could be. That's what God wants to do, and it can begin with the humble step of asking for help. Please do it. 1-800-NEW-LIFE. We'll go to Yvonne right after this. You are listening to New Life Live. My wife had found me out and came home one weekend. She had revealed my secret. The only reason I was sorry at that time is because I had been caught. I had had the Every Man's Battle book for years and pulled that book out that weekend and found the phone number on the back and called it. And then a week later, I was at Every Man's Battle. It really gave me the start I needed for my recovery. I never had had that opportunity to sit down with guys I didn't even know and totally open up. The good thing was, was I was opening up to guys I didn't even know. So why did I care? Just lay it all out on the table. I have nothing to lose. You need to check it out. At least go online, check out what it's about and take the chance and go do it. If you're struggling, call us. There are people on the other end of the line who want to hear from you, who want to help you. We don't want you to go on struggling, but you got to take that first step. Just give us a call. It's 1-800-639-5433. It's 1-800-NEW-LIFE. I was really living a very anxiety-filled life. I turned on New Life, and the topic that day was about anxiety. And just by listening, I got relief. You can help New Life Live stay in the air by joining Club New Life today. When you sign up to support us monthly through Club New Life, we'll send you a set of four devotionals, 100 Days of Character, Peace, Prayer, and the newly released 100 Days of Healing. Plus, there are ongoing benefits like access to the Club New Life video library, the monthly Club New Life CD or download, quarterly resources, free shipping on purchased resources, and discounts on workshops. I did go to Take Your Life Back. That's been immensely helpful to me. That's why I continue to support the ministry with the hope that not only am I helping my own situation, that I'm helping others as well. Support Club New Life, and together we can help hurting people find help and hope in life's hardest places. Call 1-800-639-5433 to join Club New Life today. We'd love to hear from you. If you have a question or a comment, call toll-free 1-800-229-3000. Now back to New Life Live. We are back. Glad you're with us. And as I said, we're going to go right to Yvonne and see what she has to say. And uh, Yvonne, how are you doing today? I think uh, Terry's going to have to click Yvonne on here. Yvonne, are you with us? Hello. Hi. How can we yeah, help? I'm here. Can you hear me? Yes. Yeah. Hi. Um, I'm calling today because I have some questions about uh, marijuana addiction. Um, uh, I have a family member. Um, one of my kids is really struggling with marijuana addiction to an extreme degree. Um, she's in. Um, she's been trying and trying and trying to quit. Um, and there's. There's been some uh, mental effects um, that we've seen. Um, what are those? What are the mental effects in, in, you've in, seen? Um, intense anxiety and withdrawal um, with social anxieties. Just, um, um, well, I don't know if it's related, but she has nightly nightmares about the same thing um, mm -hmm. for quite a long time. And... Um, She's not thinking right. Um, the, the the thought process says that um, you just aren't right, and the depression. Um, and I was just um, wondering about the, like brain can brains get damaged from this, and 
the underlying medical issues that might yeah. be, you know, she's self-medicating. Um, she's in a, she's getting help currently. Um, it, but it's been, um, it's been pretty extreme. The, uh, the, the intense, um, ramifications of this addiction. Yvonne, what um, kind of help, what kind of help is she, on it? Yvonne, what kind of help well, is she receiving? She just um, is going to a day program that's for two weeks. And I was just, you know, wondering what are the most effective steps of overcoming marijuana and how can we as a family um, help her and also have boundaries? Because I, I um, feel that I definitely have problems with enabling and um, all in the name of love. Um, but anyway, I, I just... I was just okay. uh, you don't hear too much about a, a marijuana addiction on um, okay. when people call in it doesn't seem but thank yeah. you. Well Quick they question. try to say it's not addictive and right. you th this person is certainly proving that that's not true. Quick question for you um how uh, what hours does she go to her program? 8:30 to 4 Monday okay. through Friday and then half days on Saturday and Sunday. Is she going to any kind of uh, recovery meeting in the evenings? Um, well, she's looked them up, but she hasn't yet. I, we well, have in the past gone to you know a few with her. Okay, so, so she hasn't been able to stop, right? She no. Well, she has stopped and uh, a couple years she, ago for about five months, and then she hasn't been able to stay stopped. She hasn't been able to stay stopped. She's struggling with it. That's what you were telling us, right? Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. So here's what you can do. You can write this down. Number one, you go with her to recovery meetings at least three evenings. A week because nothing she's done has helped and it's gotten worse and the program's only two weeks so you want to help her get into the habit immediately like starting tonight to go to meetings that's how people stay off of this is they go to meetings and then you need to go to Al-Anon meetings yourself and she needs to know you're going to your own meetings because she's not been able to stay off of this and you haven't been able to help her and you want to deal with all of the enabling she needs to understand the rules when she gets out of that program she needs to know she can't stay there if she relapses but if she's going to recover you'll give her all the support you possibly can you need to have a plan from the treatment program for her to stay free of marijuana and you need to know that plan and you need to think it's a great plan and agree with it. Dave, Alice, any thoughts you have on how she can help her stay off of marijuana? Well, one, one thing I'm thinking as you're talking is this is a serious problem. It's not a light problem and it, it's made light of in our culture as if it's not a problem, but it's the marijuana of today is, is so, many, so many times more potent than what it was at Woodstock that uh, it's not easy to get off, and she's proof of that. And, and you can't, three meetings a week is, is probably minimum for your daughter. True. It probably should be four or five, because if she's serious about getting off, that's what's going to happen. And just the fact that she only looked up the meetings but has not gone to a meeting in the evening that should be concerning and that might be something that you'd want to talk with the people at the treatment program about but certainly talk to her your concern that she's not willing to put everything she's got into recovery all right we'll take a break we'll come right back i'll send you a life recovery bible for her alice you had a thought there send, send her that book about loving somebody that's alcohol or Understanding and loving a person with chemical dependency will do that. And it's psychiatric coming. intervention might be needed, too, to treat the anxiety and the depression. Yeah. And it does affect the brain. 
If you stop it we'll take soon a, enough, yep. it can be reversed. All right, we'll be back. For most of my life, I've been dealing with an opiate addiction. Why is opioid addiction quickly becoming one of our nation's biggest killers? Maybe it's because it isn't only those who are addicted who are in denial. We did what I see so many parents do, is it can't be an addiction. There's something medically wrong. It's impossible to solve a problem when you don't know what you're up against, and families will try to find any explanation except the one that will put them on the right path. Alcoholism and drug addiction is a family disease. It doesn't affect just the individual. If someone you love is abusing painkillers, know what you're up against. It's time to admit it's addiction and seek treatment. Call us today at 1-800-NEW-LIFE. We have Christ-centered partner treatment centers around the country. Call 1-800-639-5433 or visit us online at newlife.com. We just made a decision. We will do whatever it takes. 1-800-NEW-LIFE. Hi, this is Steve Arterburn, and for 30 years, New Life has been the most trusted name in Christian counseling. I'm an addict, and I'm trying to get God in my life again. You seem to be able to get to the crux of a problem quickly. Our Christ-centered treatment programs can help you break free to embrace all that God has for you and your family. I just want to thank you guys for bringing me to a relationship with Jesus. There really is help for marital problems, depression, addictions, panic attacks, and feelings of hopelessness. I came back with so many tools to help me prepare myself to fight this struggle and this battle that I have every day. You can start living again today. Living the life God intended for you. Help is available at 1-800-NEW-LIFE. They did care and they did follow up very lovingly and it made all the difference in my life. Call us at 1-800-NEW-LIFE. Someone who cares is waiting at the other end of the phone. God can open the door to a better tomorrow right now. Just call us at 1-800-NEW-LIFE. 1-800-639-5433. glad you joined us for New Life Live. To be a part of the program, call 1-800-229-3000. Now back to New Life Live. We're back. Steve Arterburn here. Let's talk with uh, Laura, Santa Rosa, California. How you doing, Laura? KFAX is the station. Hey. hey. Yeah. Hi. Hey, hey. Steve, this is um, Laura. Thank you so much for, for taking my call today. Yep. Um, I'm, I'm actually calling regarding a, a sensitive topic. Um, it certainly has impacted my extended family and very close friends. So um, I decided to go ahead and call and just ask a few questions about it. Um, several weeks ago, you had a conversation on your program with a gentleman named Nick and he was looking for a wife, and you asked him, well, well, Nick, what is it that's important to you? What are you looking for? And he said, well, you know, I'd like to marry a committed Christian. I would really uh, like her to be a virgin. Um, I'd like for her to not be divorced. And um, he was young. He had never been married before. And, you know, your response to him at that time was, um, well, you know, Nick, you, you need to consider, you know, divorced people. There's a lot of great folks out there who are divorced and people grow through life and you need to consider divorced people as well. And my question today is when, and so I'm in earnest just about guidelines and what God's Word actually does say about the topic. And when you read Romans 7, chapter 7, verses 1 through 6, and then you read 1 Corinthians 7, um, both of them clearly state that the um, per, a person is free to remarry when their spouse has died. Um, that's very clear, and it says if that person remarries someone else and their spouse is still living, that they actually commit adultery. And we talk a lot in Christian circles about fornication, living together, and how all of that is wrong. Yeah. But we never seem to address these two passages of Scripture um, to guide, to literally guide and direct our decision-making. And my one thought is this, that if people were married and really did understand the gravity of those passages and what it teaches, I think they would fight so much harder for their marriage, realizing on the other side that the option to just go freely marry somebody else actually isn't found anywhere in Scripture. 
Well, Laura, uh, let me let me uh, talking, let me let, okay. Laura. You're gonna yeah. have to let me talk now, okay? Yeah. So I, I yeah. heard what you yeah. said. There's one other scripture that says this, and these are the words of Jesus, Matthew 19:9. Mm -hmm. And I tell you this: right. whoever divorces his wife and marries someone else commits adultery, unless right. his wife has been unfaithful. Now, and that is the exception. That, I agree okay. with that, Steve. So, yeah, that's, so that's what we teach here, what we teach here, is that a person who's there's one other exception that's mentioned about a non-believer abandoning the person and then here and so that's what the bible says and that's what we believe in and so um, i would say that there are people that should really take a second look at whether or not they are free uh, to marry now the other thing that we have to take into consideration is that divorce uh, is not the unpardonable sin either. And uh, the past no, couple of shows... No, I'm not saying uh, that at all. Yeah. yeah. And so uh, I think if you are not uh, free to remarry because you don't follow those exceptions, I think absolutely it would be better if you did not remarry when you, in, in an act of it receiving God's mercy and grace marry outside of that I, I just think there are all sorts of uh th reasons that that could present problems for you that you never imagine and so we want to do exactly what scripture says and and uh, that you know it, i'm not we shouldn't divorce somebody if the exceptions aren't there but some people get divorced. You know, the person divorces them. They were unfaithful, and then the unfaithful p person right. divorces them. And so I think that person is absolutely free to marry. There are some ministries that teach, no, that, that's not even free to remarry. And they encourage anybody that's married someone that was divorced to divorce and marry, remarry the original person or not marry. And that's not our position here no. so all of this is really no. really tricky uh you could say uh and we want to be true to scripture uh but we also it, but we also don't want to put a burden and this is something jesus hated to put a burden on people that shouldn't be there so sometimes i don't say everything that needs to be said and if I said everything every time that needs to be said, I would have said there are some divorced people uh, who have been divorced that are absolutely free to remarry. They, they married somebody and there was a flip. I've seen it happen over and over. The person was unfaithful and then left for the other person and there they are. That'd be somebody you'd want to consider marrying, I think. Versus, oh, they've been married. I can't even think about having a date with them. That was the thing I was trying to get across. But I didn't, pro I didn't okay. say it very well. Yeah, I think just because he was so young and had never been married before, I would have thought there would have been an earnest encouragement to um, pursue an opportunity with someone who had never married before. Oh, I because think really I think that's well. That's always, guideline. yeah, that is a good thing. But also, uh, I just, man, I just know, I have a niece that I'm telling you, it just she's one of the most amazing people in the world, and it would have been a mistake yeah. for somebody once her husband was unfaithful and left her. What a mistake it would have been for yeah. someone not to even consider because she was divorced because i'm telling you she's one of the most godly wonderful caring giving people in this universe so that's that's my main point it. there yeah yeah it's not a it's yeah. not uh, yeah go out and find somebody that's divorced and marry it was just well don't eliminate everybody look at look at each situation and mm -hmm. handle each person mm -hmm. personally i think our theologies actually laura would be pretty lined up even though from time to time my phone call 
uh, or my answers don't focus totally on all of the issues that would be a little bit better answer or more clear. Let me send you a restoration Bible there, just uh, our way of saying thanks for calling us. All right, let's go to, um, how about, uh, well, hold on just a second. Let's talk to um, Kathy from Des Moines, Iowa. Iowa's been in the headlines recently <laughs> there, Kathy. How are you doing today? You betcha. Doing great. <laughs> Was at caucuses okay. last night and uh, did my thing for the country. <laughs> Good for you. But Good for I'm you. so excited to talk to you guys today. Mm -hmm. It's so exciting. Um, long time listener, first time caller. Um, okay. and I, what's going on? I, my question is, well, my question is that, uh, my father in all his wonderful encouragement has said, you're too old to go get a counseling degree and to go on and, and start up a practice because I, I really feel like my community needs more mental health <laughs> in a yeah. good way. How old are you? And my husband, How old are you? I'm 57. And a counseling degree would probably take, let's let's say, on the outset, to get all set up, uh, let's say, what do you think, Alice, five years? Yep, I was thinking four to six. So in five years, you're going to be 62, whether you yeah. get a counseling degree or not. I, I'd rather be 62 with a counseling degree. Well, that's true. That's and then you're probably only going to have, just, you'll probably have 20 years, if you keep going like you are, 20 years to practice. And uh, that's that's kind of a, a career. <laughs> I want to encourage you to do it. That's a good run. I, I join oh, you. That's good. Well, when you, when you guys had John Townsend uh, in and the Townsend Institute, I went ahead and got and contacted them. And then I haven't responded because I just, my dad kind of put the kibosh on it. But yeah, I am 57, so he's. It, it, while his his input is fine, it is not vital. Um, my another question I had then was, how much of your own life garbage do you have to have solved in order to be a counselor? <laughs> you have to understand <laughs> it. You don't have to solve it. Yeah, you have to understand. Have to have it. insight into it and how it impacts your daily life, and, and be willing to keep working on it. Some of the wisest people that I studied oh, yeah. with in my programs, they were in their second or even third career, and they brought so much life wisdom to our studies that they were leagues mm -hmm. ahead of some of the rest of us who mm -hmm. were younger in the program. But your knowledge that you're mm -hmm. broken and your willingness to get help is what will really put you in a different category as a counselor, because a lot of us cannot see our own brokenness. Yeah. All right. Got to go to a break. Hold on. We'll be back right after this. You're listening to New Life Live. Glad you are. She said, we need to talk. She's asked me for the first time if I would consider myself a sex addict. You know, I thought it was just about admitting the things that I had done wrong. I, I never had a clue that it was about redeeming our story. You know, I thought it was just about coming clean on what I had done. I had no idea how to help her with her pain. She was a mess, I was a mess, and, and we got divorced. Going to EMB, surrounding myself with these other men, they accepted me for who I was and what I had done, but they challenged me to step up and do better. You know, they'll be around other men who are not just pointing the finger, but um, willing to get in and wade through it with them, you know, get in the trenches. They'll get hope from this workshop. Take my sweet wife and my story. We were divorced, remarried, and on our way to what I think uh, will be the sweetest years of our lives. You know, it's no longer simply about surviving. For the first time ever, you know, we're thriving, we're enjoying where we're at. Hey, listen, if you're struggling, we want to see you at the workshop. Give us a call, 1-800-NEW-LIFE. Hi, this is Steve Arterburn, and for 30 years, New Life has been the most trusted name in Christian counseling. Your ministry has saved my life. If you struggle with emotional hurt, family or marriage problems, the pit of depression, or the pain of addictions, we can help. I'm down 100 pounds now from what I was. You guys are awesome. You are a blessing to America. <laughs> Our treatment programs provide clinically appropriate solutions from licensed professionals all in a biblical framework. I have had problems with alcohol. I think God has ordained this place to be His. You don't have to be a prisoner of your pain. Help is available at 1-800-NEW-LIFE. She tells me that I'm a new man and I feel like a new man. It worked for me and it can work for them too. This time it is different. If you're ready to take the first step toward genuine spiritual and emotional healing, 
please call us today at 1-800-NEW-LIFE. God can open the door to a better tomorrow right now. Call 1-800-NEW-LIFE. That's 1-800-639-5433. To find out more information about New Life or to order any of the resources mentioned on today's program, call 1-800-NEW-LIFE. Now back to New Life Live. We're back. Steve Arterburn here, and uh, we'll send Kathy uh, Restoration Bible to help her right along there with all that she's doing. And uh, Larry Sonnenberg's in the studio, and we'll take one more call after him. Larry. Steve, you you have a testimony. Let's I do. Hear. You know, we do a lot of every man's battle testimonies, and I thought we got to give the women some equal time because we got a restore workshop coming up here in just a couple of weeks. Yeah. This lady says it's been so incredibly incredibly validating to hear God's truth on my situation, and to be encouraged by strong, brave, and courageous godly women. I now know that it's okay to have the feelings I do. It's okay to take as long as I need to heal. It's not only okay, but imperative that I have a voice to make my needs known. This whole weekend was beautifully contrary to what you so often hear from the Christian community. Thank you for bringing God's truth to me. And I just thought, wow. Uh, Ladies and gentlemen, that's what you are supporting when you support New Life. You're supporting somebody hearing the truth, hearing some validation from godly people, getting connected into redemptive relationships. And if that if that tickles your giving bone, would you please make a gift? We need it, and we'd love for you to join Club New Life. We'd love for you to make an individual gift. Um, it's just a blessing. You'll be blessed when you give, let alone the people who will benefit because their life will be forever different. Mm-hmm. So for that reason, please help us. Yeah, for that mm-hmm. reason, please give us a call. One eight hundred New Life. Send you a copy of the twentieth anniversary Life Recovery Bible, and don't forget about Club New Life. You can really, really help this ministry. Thirty dollars a month by joining Club New Life and being one of our regular supporters. The phone number one eight hundred New Life. All right. Thank you, Larry. Let's go to Esther, Fairfield, California. Wish I could get to the other calls. KFIA is the station. Hi, Esther. How you doing? Hi, good afternoon. Uh, Thank you for taking my call. Um, I wanted to see if there was any uh, local counselors or books I can read um, on anxiety and how to overcome this naturally. What's going on? Dealing with this. So, I have a hard time trusting and... um, I recently came down with some weird ne- neurological issues where my my limbs will go numb or or they start to tingle. Um, they get they get like burning, and so doctors are saying it sounds very close to small fiber neuropathy. And but they're like, we don't know where it came from. Another doctor said, no, you don't have any kind of neuropathy. This is all psycho somatic cycles and mm-hmm. i don't know he just okay. said you're doing this to he said, you're doing this to yourself okay and I, so what did they prescribe for you what they, did they tell you to do they, they told me to go on anti-anxiety medicine i tried it once i didn't seem to feel any different and other than my mood but everything in my body was still having these flare-ups so i went off of it and they tapered me off and now they're saying you need to go back on it you're too anxious you're too anxious and I said I don't I don't trust you guys and partly is because I saw my father for 10 years decline under medical care there was no it just kept pumping medicine into him until he finally died and in that time uh, what what kind of what kind of problem did you what kind of problem did your um, father have he was diabetic, uh-huh. and okay. closer to the end, I had to. He didn't speak any English, so I had to translate a lot of it. And I saw his decline. I saw a lot of the complaints, and and honestly, I sound like him. I don't have mm. diabetes, but a lot of the complaints are there. The stomach issues, okay. my yeah. hands, my um, all of a sudden okay. it gets hot and it gets cold, forgetfulness, right. and I'm thinking. 
how did I get here? Okay, so let's let's so, uh, hear Alice give you her her thoughts as she hears your trouble. Esther, just hearing about the loss of your father and the hopelessness you probably felt watching his decline and you know an inability to intervene or help him much. I would just imagine you have a great deal of grief from just that, and it's only one part of what you have been through in your life. I, I'm sad to hear the doctor say it's psychosomatic, you're just doing it to yourself, because whatever these symptoms are that you're feeling, you're certainly not intentionally producing them, but stress and grief that is uh, pushed down or held back, it can cause some very mind-boggling symptoms in our body that don't make sense to the medical community. My, my biggest hope for you would that you, you would be in a structured process of being able to talk through your stories, the loss of your father and the other difficult things that you've been through in your life, but it would have to be with someone you trust. I understand your distrust of the medical field, and I think talk therapy or therapy for traumatic loss would go a long way for you. Yeah, and you know, here's the thing, uh, Esther, that I, I fear for you is that you might not accept some help from some caring uh, individuals that know what they're talking about just because your father got help from a different form of medicine from people that, you know, maybe didn't take everything into consideration. And so I don't want his lack of care or malpractice to prevent you from moving forward. And, you know, here's the thing. When you take anti-anxiety medication, you're able to trust people a little bit better, but you don't trust them. And so if you don't trust them and take the medication, then you never get to experience that benefit to where maybe you just need it a little while and then things adjust and you can get off of it. Dave, any thoughts here well, for you that from you that might help her? Finding a counselor that you can trust. That, that's the nature of, of a counselor's business is to be trustworthy and to take your time. Anxiety can be dealt with through talk therapy, as Alice is saying, and Getting, getting started in that and staying with it, you will find the benefits will come gradually, but they will come for a certain. Yeah. There are supplements. Uh, you know, some people, 5-HTP is being a great supplement. Exercise is probably the, the greatest non-medicine uh, that you can do for every kind of ailment. There's just nothing... Uh, much other than a, a bad knee or hip that, from exercise, but but really, that's you. You simply must consider how much activity am I getting, and maybe you can increase that. And but oh my goodness, there there are these people that care. They they are Christians. They use medication. They prescribe medication if it's called for. They don't if it's not. Uh, if we can get you in touch with one of those folks and you can trust them, everything could be so, so different. All right. Uh, we, we really want to help you. You have to call us first, 1-800-NEW-LIFE. The things that we have available for you. Well, first of all, every man's battle is every month. And then we've got, well, our intimacy in marriage is sold out. But in July the 24th, we'll be in Washington, D.C. to do another one. And you could sign up now for that one and not miss your place. There is uh, Restore. Larry mentioned a wonderful testimony from Restore on February 28th in Orange County. And then I'll be doing with Chris Williams, Finding Freedom, March the 15th. Also, if you've never been on a new life trip, we're going to go to Europe this year. And we're going to do something we've wanted to do a long time. It's a, it's a river cruise down the Rhine River. And it's going to be full of spiritual truth Mylon K myself are going Amsterdam and all sorts of wonderful place Strasbourg France Switzerland come join us call us at 1-800-NEW-LIFE if you need help or we could help you thanks for listening we hope this program has helped you by giving you insights for handling the challenges you face in your life we want you to know that we're here for you but you also need to know that New Life Live is a listener supported ministry make your donation or to get any of the resources mentioned on today's program, call 1-800-NEW-LIFE. 
That's 1-800-639-5433 or write to us at New Life Ministries, P.O. Box 1029, Lake Forest, California, 92609. Please join us again on Monday for New Life Live. Hi, Steve Artemir here. Thanks for watching New Life Live on our New Life YouTube channel. You know, you can see it anytime. Hope you'll subscribe. And when you do, hope you'll turn that little button thing on the bell so that whenever we post a new video, it'll ring right through. Now, if you go to newlife.com, you'll see the schedule of when we're in the studio, which is helpful to know if you have a question for the program. Or you could go to newlife.com or call us at 1-800-NEW-LIFE. You could do this on the app. I mean, there's so many ways that you can stay in touch with us and know when we're there because we want to answer your questions. So thanks for watching right here on the New Life YouTube channel, and we'll see you next time. Okay. <laughs> Click here to subscribe.